Yeah, he's a Trojan, Jim. I keep telling you that. He's a Trojan. No, uh, you know, Matt has a lot of arm talent. He really does. And uh, he's done a good job of picking up the system. It's hard coming in and then all of a sudden be thrown out there, learn a new system. But he's been around a lot. Um, each day it gets a little better for him. Uh, so far it's been good to be able to operate the offense and, and get us in the end zone. Pat, is that what you kind of you guys envision bringing in a quarterback like that that can kind of challenge Logan? Uh, you kind of have a bigger battle there? Yeah, I think you just want, for that position, you want constant competition. I think that's been the mode the whole way since we've been here, and uh, that continues. What are the priorities that you look for when you're determining who's going to be your number two quarterback? Yeah, the ability to go out there and operate. Um, consistently operate our system, um, get in and out of the huddle, play call, and uh, good decision making and really taking care of the ball. You know, we really strive from our room. We touch it every play, so we have to take care of the ball. That's that's critical in decision making, like you said. Say something about Logan that, you know, struggled a little bit in the, in the first half of last week, but was kind of able to regroup and come back stronger. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't look at it like he struggled. I thought there were some, if you look at the situations where we were going two series at a time, it was like, oh man, penalty, nice pump return. Oh, we're backed up, you know, a um, couple tough situations, but he battled through it. You know, we, we kind of joke around when things are going like that. We're, we always say, hey, it's pro football. It's a pro football game, weird things happen and we just need to take care of it. Uh, we reserve the right to punt and play complimentary football and manage it pr appropriately from our position. And I thought Logan did a good job coming back there late and uh, a couple of good throws, real good decision, checking the ball down in the high red area, and then ultimately throwing the ball to Dez on that touchdown, uh, I thought was really a good thing for Logan. We always kind of view it as, as the receivers adjusting to the quarterback, doing what the quarterback wants. But Josh Reynolds was talking this week about Tannehill's willingness to, in certain situations, adjust to the receivers. Is there more give and take to that than maybe you imagine? Um, I, think, I think Paul, it's... I think what you're saying is the dialogue between the two. I think you have to have open communication with those guys because they all have different skill sets too. Um, I think they adjust to each other, no doubt. You know, I know for Josh, he's a long strider. You know, so we have to get used to kind of how he runs routes too. So um, each each of our receivers have different types of skill sets, and we certainly try to adapt to that and kind of meet in the middle. Knowing how much each of those guys have different skill sets, Julio Jones and Tannehill, how can they get on the same page? Yeah, we'll find a way to get her done. We'll find a way to get her done. Uh, they spend a lot of time. I mean, in our meeting rooms, you know, it's it's Ryan and AJ and, and Julio. They sit right next to each other. So um, there's a ton of communication. You see that going on constantly. Um, they have gotten some work in. Obviously, there'll be more as uh, we get closer here. Uh, and it's interesting because you have that extra time after this next game that's a little unusual before you know, September 12th. So uh, there'll be a little time there to get that going. Is it difficult to get that feel, that chemistry without having as many reps? Well, maybe with a, a younger player, but with veterans like these guys, um, you know, we feel pretty confident about it. And, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, like I said, we have some time here to, to kind of work through that process. And we feel pretty good about that. Even when Julio hasn't been able to, to be on the field all that much, just his experience, like he's been in the league a, a decade. Like when, when you talk about those, you know, meeting type situations, just having his, um, you know, when, when they maybe watch film together and looking at different coverages, did you, you find kind of his, his experience helpful in that regard, even when they're not necessarily able to get as much time um, together right now? Absolutely, you know, and, and there's some familiarity that Julio has with our system. Um, a similar system when he was in Atlanta previously, uh, similar similar type of concept. So um, it's been good, and, and I think Julio's presence has been good for the other receivers too. As far as what you said, with you know all that experience and all those years in the league, uh, certainly has helped them too. It's been really smooth. It's been very, very smooth. Um, I really like the way things are going in there with us uh, and Todd. A uh, lot of cohesiveness there. Again, Todd has been really involved with the quarterbacks um, since he's been here, even as a tight end coach. Those com we're all in included in these conversations, even when Arthur was here. So um, it's been really smooth. Yeah, like he always does. Logan's awesome. Love that guy. Um, nothing changes for him. He just comes in and competes every day. He's locked in, ready to go. 
um, that's one of those redeeming traits that he's always had and has uh, helped him be here. Do you have a plan for them at all on Saturday? That you're, are you guys going to rotate like you did last Saturday? Or? Yeah, Coach Rabel's got a plan for that. Um, I think you'll see both of them. And, uh, but I'll let him kind of talk about that.